जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जनावल्लाभ जय गिरीवरधारी जय गिरीवरधारी जय गोपी जनावल्लाभ जय गिरीवरधारी जय गिरीवरधारी
So, uh, what is the festival that uh, all of us are celebrating today? Radha Yeah, but also? Like, what is the... Generally, in South India, what are we celebrating? Onam. Onam, uh, right? Very uh, specifically. Thank you. Uh, so, Onam. What is the history of Onam? Which is very, somehow, uh, you know, uh, geographically limited only to Kerala. But uh, it's a very great festival, frankly. Uh, also, sadly, not uh, everybody in Kerala also acknowledge the historically or traditionally uh, what really Onam is. So, anybody knows what is Onam? Vamana Mutsi. Yeah. So, this is the wonderful day when Vamana Dev appeared. Okay. So they are also, they recognize in Kerala, they recognize that uh, a, a, a great king called Mahabali, Mahabali, he appears and he comes on that particular day to that area and all that. Uh, so they are a little mixed up uh, because, you know, so many things are there. But uh, Kerala is, uh, you know, of course, there's a lot of beautiful tradition in that particular place. But many, on a grassroots level, many things have also been forgotten. Um, not just in Kerala, I think in many places, you can come to Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, uh, so many other places you go to. Uh, so many things have been lost uh, over time, but it becomes, uh, you know, our duty, each one of us, to understand what Shastras are actually saying and what is the historical re uh, relevance of each of those festivals and bring it back to that. Otherwise, it will only be, you know, some festival, we cook something, put it on banana leaf and we ate. Right? Or Diwali comes, we burst some crackers. Nobody knows what are we bursting crackers for, isn't it? So we're just bursting crackers. If the government says, don't burst crackers, we get angry. No, we'll burst more crackers. We'll do all that. But why are you bursting crackers? What is the purpose of that? Right? Well, who appeared there? Why are we celebrating uh, Diwali? Why is it called Diwali? Why is it called Deepavali? Why are certain people calling it Deepavali? Some people calling it Diwali? All of this is very important. These festivals are coming up, isn't it? Uh, the Shara is coming up. Um, so, uh, what is the relevance of all these festivals? It's very, very important that we understand these things. If we don't, then it will only become a cracker bursting festival or banana, you know, eating festival, something like that. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much. So, uh, touching upon that, uh, today is a very special day, though Radhashtami is, uh, was celebrated, uh, you know, last week. Oh, is it going to fall down? No, it will not fall down. Okay. It has habit. Oh, okay. it's still there. <laughs> it's giving us a disco effect. <laughs> Fine. So, um, today is a special day because it is also the appearance day of uh, Vamana Deva. So, it is also Vamana Jayanti. Okay? And it is the appearance day of a very great, um, very great Acharya, also. Anyone knows? Srila Jiva Goswami. So, we will certainly speak about Radharani, but I think we should also touch upon a little um, about Vamana Deva. We'll also talk a little bit about Jiva Goswami, and we'll also then get into um, Srimati Radharani's pastimes. Hmm. So, uh, Vamande was was the son of whom? Anybody knows? Vamande's parents? Kashyapa. Yeah. Kashyapa. Kashyapa Muni and Aditi. Hmm? Actually, the pronunciation traditionally, originally, is Kashyapa. Okay, we uh, tend to say Kashyapa. Kashyapa. Uh, Kashyapa, uh, Kashyapa in uh, Sanskrit, Kashyapa means alcohol. So when you call someone Kashyapa Rishi, it means a Rishi who drinks alcohol. <laughs> so he may get offended. <laughs> so uh, actually it is traditionally it is Kashyapa, Kashyapa Rishi. But uh, okay, people also say Kashyapa Rishi like that. Um, anyway, so... Uh, Aditi, once what happened was, um, many times there is always war between the Daityas and Devatas. So, uh, the Daityas had won this time because of the supreme power of Bali Maharaj. 
Bali Maharaj is the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. Hmm? So, uh, and Prahlad Maharaj, you can see who Prahlad Maharaj's father was. Prahlad himself was extremely powerful because he was protected. Uh, Hiranyakashipu was dependent only on his strength. Prahlad Maharaj was undefeatable. Thankfully, he is on our side. Prahlad Maharaj is undefeatable because he was constantly protected by Sudarshan Chakra himself. Sudarshana would always be on top of, after the whole episode of Narsimha appearing and going, uh, Lord Narsimha left behind his Sudarshan Chakra, which would always be on top of Prahlad Maharaj's head. So nobody could, anybody in the universe, nobody could overpower him because Sudarshana was always with him. So uh, who's the son of uh, Prahlad Maharaj? Virochana. Virochana. Uh, so after Virochana, Virochana also was a very uh, uh, dreaded demon. Okay, so uh, Hiranyakashipu was a very powerful, dreaded uh, demon. Then comes Prahlad Maharaj, and he was able to pacify all the Daityas and bring everybody under control, and he would preach to them and all of that. But later on, his son was Virochana. Virochana again became a great demon, a very dangerous person, and uh, he would not, uh, he did not go after his father. He said that, no, 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 I am inspired by my grandfather, Hiranyakashipu, and I want to bring back that glory. So he did that, he went, his story is different, and um, after his departure comes his son, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was also inspired by his own father, Virochana, but uh, very much influenced by his guru, who was his guru. Shukracharya. Shukracharya, right? Shukracharya. So Shukracharya uh, himself is a very powerful, um, powerful um, acharya and a guru. In fact, Shukracharya is one of the Navagrahas. Correct? Which graha is he? Shukra graha. On what particular day do they worship uh, Shukracharya? Friday. Friday. Shukravara. Right? So Shukracharya. He is a very great Acharya, nonetheless, but he was very uh, always supportive of the Daityas. So he wanted to, you know, kind of um, take care of the Daityas. So he would be a great motivational speaker to Bali Maharaj. And he would tell Bali Maharaj that we have to bring back the glory of the Daityas. These Devatas are too much. Somehow or the other, we have to defeat them. So Bali Maharaj was, you know, inspired by his motivational speeches and he said, we'll do it. And Bali Maharaj was extremely powerful because he has the DNA and uh, the blessings of Mahavishnu through Prahlad Maharaj. Right? So Prahlad Maharaj's spirit of being undefeated was there within uh, Bali Maharaj. So he conquered all the three worlds. He even defeated Indra. He defeated all the most powerful devatas and he conquered the entire. So all the devatas had gone into hiding. None of the devatas were visible and the entire universe was managed by the Asuras. Right? So, what happened at that particular point was, one day Aditi was very morose and very sad. Very morose and sad. So, she, uh, uh, when his, uh, her uh, husband asked her what exactly happened, why are you so sad? She said, I'm missing all my children. All my children are in hiding. I don't see any of my children. And it's very heartbreaking for me. Uh, can you do something about it? So, Kashyapa Muni, he said, um, okay, uh, no, I, will, I, I don't know what to do, I can only pray to the Lord. So, he very intensely meditated and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord inspired him through the heart that both you and your wife, Aditi, perform a certain vrata. It is called as payo vrata. Okay, so payo vrata is a vrata particularly in uh, you if you read the scriptures for people who don't have children and they wish to have children they perform something called as payo vrata payo vrata is it sounds very simple but it's not that simple for 12 days you are supposed to consume only milk mm -hmm. so uh, if you consume only milk for 12 days, and of course the entire day uh, you are supposed to be worshipping the Lord and perform tapasya also, 
payovrata otherwise uh, it's not that you know we're drinking milk and dreaming of pizza or something i'm you know something else so it doesn't work that way i have to meditate on the lord while consuming only milk so you can imagine if you just have milk once or twice in a day we may be able to tolerate it but after two days you'll get fed up with milk right so in this way 12 days uh, so it sounds like a very short duration but it's a, it's a big tapasya to do so both of them perform this tapasya this vrata very perfectly and then in the heart one day during his meditation of kashapa rishi he felt that the lord himself is entering in his heart just like something happened between um vasudeva and devaki so vasudeva also felt the same thing that the supreme lord has entered his heart and kashapa muni also felt that and from him uh, the supreme lord entered the womb of aditi and then a child was born mahavishnu himself was born and this uh, this boy after he showed his form as mahavishnu then suddenly he took a form of a small child and not just an ordinary child he took the form of a dwarf a dwarf a brahmana dwarf vatu brahmana okay so he was a brahmachari and a dwarf and uh, it was a glorious moment and all the devatas came they all appeared and everybody gave him different kinds of gifts and a uh, brahmana when the upanayana happens uh, the gayatri mantra is chanted now this gayatri mantra was chanted by surya deva himself okay so sabitu uh, so this mantra gayatri mantra is dedicated to surya narayana so we chant that to surya so that mantra itself was given by surya into the year of uh, vamana and the upavita uh, or the sacred thread that is worn by vamana was given to him by lord brahma himself like that so the different devatas they come and they give him different gifts etc so uh, this vamana he sets out on his mission to go and meet bali maharaj so he goes directly to the yagya shala where bali maharaj is performing uh, 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 yagya ashwamedha yagyas and he performs if he completes performing 100 ashwamedha yagyas then he becomes qualified as indra so he wanted to become now he had taken over the position of indra by force but now he wanted to become qualified also that tomorrow nobody should say that without qualification he, he reached that position right so it's like you you know uh, take over the position and then you start studying and then you get the degree and then you know it's uh, so he was going the other way around and indra couldn't do anything he said now he finishes uh, 100 ashwamedha then by qualification also he'll be indra now what about me you know i am supposed to be the designated indra he was worried you know what about my position etc so uh, everybody said now vamana is there don't worry he will take care of it so vaman deva went there during the last ashwamedha before he performed it and he told him uh, he saw this brahmana and there was nobody else there were many brahmanas in that place but there was nobody like vamana because he was shining like the sun so radiant so immediately he paid obeisances to him and he said dear brahmana you've come at the right opportunity just before my yagya i am i am in a very benevolent mood today so you ask me what do you want i'll give it to you and uh, so vaman deva said uh, anything anything i want so he said yes absolutely anything whatever you want i will give it to you so um vamana said give me uh, three sets of land three sets of land and bali maharaj laughed at him he said do you really know who you've approached you know who i am he said i am the king of the three worlds the three worlds belong to me anything you want i would have given it to you you want the whole of swarga loka i would have given it to you you want a good brahmana wife i would have given it to you any anything you would have asked all money wealth anything you want i would have given it to you so when um, vamana when he heard this he said frankly bali maharaj if a person is not happy with three steps of land he will not be happy even with the three universes and this one statement made bali maharaj very reflective he said somewhere it is true 
because I am already now the Lord of the three worlds. But in my heart, I'm, I'm not satisfied. Somehow I'm not satisfied. Something is, I feel something is missing. This is the Prahlad Maharaj DNA in his body. Right? In the modern terms, we say DNA. Actually, it is samskara. Okay? So this is a samskara that, that comes from Bali Maharaj. Actually, all of you are sitting here and all of you are, are practicing bhakti in various forms. The fact that you've chosen to be here on a, on a Sunday evening is because of a samskara that is there in your system that is coming from one of your ancestors. From somewhere, someone has done something. You may think, I don't know, I know my grandfather and all, nothing like that. You don't know. It may have come, somebody would have done something and it's there in your system. And that is why today, uh, there could be thousands of people in this particular area, but uh, you have chosen that, no, a Sunday evening, rather than doing something else, let me come and hear something about Krishna. That is because of your samskara, which is coming from your lineage, from somewhere. And we should that is why we should also be appreciative of our ancestors and be grateful to them. Because somebody has done something and because of that today I have an opportunity to listen or speak about Krishna. Right? So in this way, Bali Maharaj also felt it. And he said, you're right. Okay, so I will give it to you. He said, what do you need the three foot? Uh, a, a Brahmana only wants that much land to perform yajna. So he said, to perform yajna, I need that much land, you give that to me. Everything belongs to you anyway. So he said, okay, I'll give it to you. So he takes his, um, uh, the kundala to pour water. You know, that's how you make a promise. So uh, Shukracharya said, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He, he is cheating you. I know who he is. That is Mahavishnu himself. He said, I, I don't know, I've already made the promise. And uh, anybody in my lineage, it could be uh, Prahlad Maharaj, Hiranyakashipu, my father, uh, anybody. We've never broken a promise till today. And I don't want to bring a bad reputation. Bad reputation is worse than death for me. So I made a promise, I'm going to give it. I'm going to donate that. Uh, Shukracharya said, no. In fact, Shukracharya takes a very small form and he enters that water pot and he hides in that hole. Right? And uh, so that the water doesn't fall. So, Bali Maharaj is doing this, water is not falling. And uh, Vamandev says, no, 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 no problem, I'll take it. So he takes a stick and he pokes that hole. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's why one of his eye is uh, damaged, right? So, uh, uh, now that happens and Shukracharya comes out and his eye is bleeding and all that. And he tells Bali Maharaj, you're a fool, you're a fool, you don't understand what you're doing. He's a great guru, but this is also, he, uh, uh, and Bali Maharaj also knew that this is Vishnu. And he tells him that, I know, I know this is Vishnu. And uh, he says, but I'm not going to listen to you, Shukracharya. Uh, whatever it is, he wants that land. I know it's not just three uh, foot of land, there's something else. But uh, I'm going to give it to him. Whatever he asks for, I'm going to give it to him. So, Shukracharya gets really upset with him, and Shukracharya curses him. He said, I curse you today that you worked so hard to get the three worlds with my blessings. I curse you that you will lose everything. Everything will be lost. I curse you. And he, he goes away from there. He says, so be it. This is also a learning for us that many times we may feel someone is very great and you know we are followers of someone, and uh, whoever it is. But if that person tells you not to surrender to Vishnu, then that person must be rejected. It would be the greatest of gurus. If that person is telling you not to surrender to Vishnu, then that person must be rejected. And this is what Bali Maharaj teaches us. And this is what uh, this is uh, this is the mood in which we need to celebrate Onam also. So um, this is after this incident, um, he pours the water. He says, "I promise three uh, three feet of land, your feet, small feet, you choose, you take it." And then immediately, the Lord, after he accepts the promise, he makes himself so big, so big, so big, it's beyond uh, 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 something that anybody could even imagine. It's, you know, through different dimensions. He breaks open, uh, breaks open different dimensions. In fact, human beings would not even be able to perceive what is going on. Right? After a certain point in height, I mean, your eyesight will not reach. And they didn't know what is going on. And he immediately expanded, and he expanded so much that uh, Bali Maharaj was, was just looking with his mouth open that what is going on? And with one foot, the entire Bhu Mandala, Bhu Mandala, um, now you see, um, Earth, planet, is just one 
planet. Okay, this is called Bhumi. But there is a Bhu Mandala. There are other planets which are similar to Earth. That is called as Bhu Mandala. Uh, where people like us, there are also human beings, Manusha, in different planets are there. It's a uh, yeah, it's a yeah, uh, it's a little different from uh, what we understand as galaxies today, um, because Bhu Mandala is different uh, compared to say our Saturn and uh, Mars and the various planets, the nine planets that we know of. It is not exactly like that. It's very different. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam explains the galaxy as being completely different. It's a complete different uh, dimension that uh, that we are talking about. So, uh, Bhu Mandala is there. In fact, one of these, uh, many of these planets uh, revolve around. Uh, there are many in many directions. We can look at it also. Uh, maybe someday we will talk about these different planetary systems. It's quite interesting. Uh, to study it and understand it from a Vedic perspective. Sometimes we talk about uh, is the is planet Earth uh, round or flat? Round. It's round? Or is it flat? It's oval. It's oval. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, because we often take pride in saying that our uh, Varahadev lifted, no? Varahadev lifted geography in uh, in ancient India was called Bhugola, right? So, we've always considered it round, but it, could it also be flat? No. So, is a plate round or flat? Flat, yeah. <laughs> Round, flat. <laughs> so, is a plate round or flat? Plate, plate. So can can something be round and flat? Yes. Okay. So we'll talk about it. It's a great science, and uh, someday we'll get into the details of it okay, because uh, we could, uh, because that's going to take a lot of time. We'll uh, we'll conduct a program separately on that. There is something called as Meru Parvata, which is a which is a mountain which is upside down. It is it's a golden mountain, and how Bhu Mandala. Uh, Brahmanto, it's the entire universe. universe. That is why it's a like anda, right? So Brahmanda. So that is one. It's like a capsule. So everything is there. So Bhu Mandala is one. Then there is the heavenly planets. So usually when we say heaven or Swarga, we think it is one planet and Indra Devi sitting, Apsaras are dancing, we've seen in the movies. No? <laughs> that is not the only uh, one. Because usually we watch through movies and we think, oh, that's the only one. But Swarga, Loka, when we say there are many different kinds of planets. Okay, there are many planets where Apsaras are not there. There are different, different kinds of things. Uh, some planets, it's different forms of enjoyment are there. Correct? So even Swarga Lokas are different kinds. And below are the lower planetary systems. Yeah, Patala is one of them. There is Atala, Sutala, Tala, Atala, like that. There are many other planetary systems. So, even the hellish planets, when we say hell, it is not one planet, right? We watch in the movies, gate opens and Yamaraj comes, buffalo and you know. So, uh, it's very different from that. Okay, very different because in movies, uh, we may not have understood so much, so they don't uh, show it like that. But Srimad Bhagavatam explains in detail how there are so many different planets, even hellish planets, there are multiple different hellish planets. For example, there is one particular planet called Raurava. It is called Raurava because there is one particular insect called as the Ruru insect that lives there. The whole place, like cockroaches, no? the whole place is infested by this one insect called Ruru insect, which is a flesh-eating insect. And if anybody goes to the Raurava planet, then he is eaten by the Ruru insect. Okay. Here the cockroach only flies, we get scared, no? Uh, the moment, we, but uh, Ruru will fly, will eat, it does everything, okay? So, uh, Ruru. Uh, don't worry, none of you are going to Ruru. All of you have come here, so we're all safe, okay? <laughs> anyway, so that's a different discussion. We'll talk about it someday. It's an interesting topic. However, so this entire Bhu Mandala was covered by one foot, and the rest of the universe was covered by another foot. Now, Two feet, two uh, you know steps of the Lord, and the entire cosmos is over. And Bali Maharaj, uh, he says, "No, you've taken everything. I have nothing else." But the Lord says, "You promised me three. 
and uh, where do I keep the next foot? You tell me. And he says, I, I don't know what to do, you know. And uh, the Lord very playfully, he, uh, in his mind, he tells Garuda, arrest him. He's a liar. So Garuda brings uh, Varuna's ropes and he ties Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj, like a, like a thief, he's arrested there. So he tells me, you, you better tell me now, you know, where do I uh, keep my next foot? So he says, I have nothing else, but uh, I have my head. So you please keep your third foot on my head right now. So the Lord keeps his foot on his... Um, on his head and he pushes him under the earth and in this way um, his pride of being Bali of being such a great uh, powerful king was all destroyed because ultimately that is what Krishna wants Krishna doesn't want our wealth what is he what do, uh, I mean what can we do with our wealth and the food that we cooked and all that you think Krishna is impressed with all of that he's got uh, uh, Mahalakshmi cooking for him mm. so uh, all these things will not impress him he, that's why he only wants our devotion. So if our food that we cook, our bhoga that we cook for Krishna, if love is missing in that, if bhakti is missing in that, then he's not interested in that. The many services that we perform, if bhakti is not there in that, then he's not interested in that. <coughs> you may be a great, uh, you know, a servitor, and you could be very talented. Someone could be a great orator. Um, many people may come and applaud and say, oh, wonderful orator. But if, if that person is only looking for their own glory in that, I wish everybody applauds and thinks I'm a very good speaker. And if there is no bhakti in that, Lord is not impressed. Others, you may be able to impress many other people, but Krishna is not impressed by that. Because he has the greatest of Gandharvas and so many people glorifying him. What will you and me do with our little bit of singing and broken voice? What can we do? How can we please Krishna? He is only, only impressed with bhakti. He is not impressed with anything else. Hmm? So, after this incident, all the uh, uh, devatas immediately, they feel empowered and they come and they attack the daityas, the daityas run away. And Shukracharya tells the daityas, don't fight back, it's not a good time, let's go away, we'll look for another time. So all the daityas go away. Bali Maharaj is there and he is bound by ropes and Vamandev smiles at him and removes the ropes and he tells him, now you'll have to go, you cannot become Indra this time because it's still Indra's turn and he has to finish his turn as Indra. So let him complete his duration. A time will come in the next Kalpa, you are going to become Indra. So the next Kalpa, the next Indra is going to be Bali Maharaj. He says, but for now, I'm going to ask you to go to Sutala, which is one of the lower planetary systems. He says, you go and reside there. Now look at the Lord's mercy that the Lord says, but you're never going to be alone because you're my devotee. You've surrendered everything to me. How can I leave you alone? You say, you go to Sutala and I'm going to come along with you. The Lord there is a guardian of Sutala because Bali Maharaj lives there. And Mahalakshmi herself appears in Sutala and makes that a very opulent place. And the place is so beautiful, though it's a lower planetary system, it is so beautiful and so opulent because of the presence of Mahalakshmi. In fact, it is so beautiful that even uh, the devatas in the Swargaloka feel envious looking at the lower planetary system, lo looking at Sutala, because it's more beautiful than any Swarga, more beautiful than any heavenly planet. That's how beautiful Sutala is. And that kingdom, was given to Bali and a very beautiful palace and Bali Maharaj is residing there as a king even today and um, and Mahavishnu himself is there in the in the doorstep as a guardian he says I'm just like Jaya Vijaya stands in Vaikuntha Mahavishnu himself stands there in the gates of Sutala protecting Bali Maharaj so that uh, imagine the Lord <coughs> himself is standing there. I was just telling one of my uh, friends recently, many years ago. Uh, how many of you know this Kannada actor called Vishnu Vardhan? Oh, there is one Kannada actor called Superstar Vishnu Vardhan who is not alive anymore. I met him some 20 years ago, 20, 22 years ago. <coughs> we had gone there and I was, I was, we were talking about some Bhagavad Gita. I had gone to his house, superstar, very rich guy and all that. And uh, we were telling him something about Krishna. He showed me one statue of Krishna near his gate. He said, your Krishna is my security guard, he says. So, uh, 
he says, uh, I have, you know, uh, you should be so confident about yourself and all that. Eventually he died. But, uh, you know, that's our uh, temporary arrogance that we, we have. Because I become so powerful, I become so rich and I'm very famous. I just feel that now I'm, I've conquered the world and uh, you know, I'm undefeatable and all of that. But this arrogance is only a matter of time. It's uh, you know, uh, trying to show off like that in front of Krishna is just like a fly, firefly in front of the sun. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so this is what happened and uh, this is the glory of, of Vamana Deva and Bali Maharaj. And Bali, uh, Vamana Deva, who cheated his devotee. And each one of us will be very happy to get cheated by Krishna. Because Krishna is the greatest cheat. He is the greatest thief. You will never find a thief like Krishna. Because he will steal everything. And this is a warning for all of you. He steals everything. One day you will say, okay, I have so much of time in my life. I will give five minutes to Krishna. I am telling you, it's a warning. You give 5 minutes to Krishna, he will take 10 minutes. Then he will make it 20 minutes. Then he will make it 12 hours. He will make it 24 hours. He will take your entire life. Everything will be taken. Krishna does that. Because he is so attractive. And uh, the beauty of Krishna is, I mentioned this I think in the last time that, we, that I was here, that the gopis, the elderly gopis, when they would keep their butter, Krishna would go and steal the butter and they would complain that he steals the butter. But the day Krishna says, no, I'm going, not going to come to your house and steal butter, then they would feel very bad. In fact, they would tie the pot so low because sometimes they would think, Krishna is going to come, he's going to steal my butter, but how will he climb so high? So let me tie the pot a little low so it becomes easier for him to steal. And then he steals and then they will complain that he steals. Right? So that is how it is. So sometimes we also complain, I don't have time, Prabhu, you are telling me chant 16 rounds, where is the time for me to chant 16 rounds? I have to do this also, that also. So we will complain, but uh, don't worry, uh, he will steal everything from you. So he will make us all chant. Huh? So <laughs> he is the most wonderful thief and uh, this is a thief that we welcome very much to our heart. And uh, But our heart also should be very soft, just like butter. If it is not soft like butter, then Krishna is not going to be interested. Hmm? So it should be nice and soft like butter. And softness by our behavior, our character, the way we conduct ourselves, soft like butter. Then Krishna will come. If it's hard, he's not interested. Hmm? So this is uh, Bali Maharaj. I, I hope I remember. Chalayasi Vikramane Bali Madhuta Vamana Padanakha nira janita jana pavana Kesha vadrita vamana rupa Jaya jagadisha hare Jaya jagadisha hare Jaya jagadisha hare So Vamana Dev Chalayasi Vikramane Shalaya means um, cheating. He cheated by taking Vikramana, by taking those steps. Shalayasi Vikramane Balin Adbhuta Vamana. He's Adbhuta. You know, he's, there's nobody like him. Adbhuta Vamana. Pada Naka Neera Janita Jana Pavana. Pada Naka. So when he lifted his leg with, the, uh, with his stone nail, he tore open the Brahmanda, the uh, you know, the shell that covers the entire universe, he tore open that and that also has a purpose. The moment his toenail uh, tore open the, uh, the universe, a spiritual water that is Ganga, which was never there on earth at that point or in the universe, this Ganga started flowing from there. Pada Nakha, Nakha is nail, Pada, a feet, Pada Nakha, Neera, Janita. So it took birth, okay? Jana Pavana for all of us. Jana Pavana to purify all of us. Padanaka Neera Janita Jana Pavana. So to this Vamana, who is Keshava Dhrita, who is another name of Keshava, Krishna, to him we, we offer our obeisances. So in this way we pray to Vamana Dev. There are many, uh, you can all pray to Vamana Dev, it's very, very nice. Even astrologically, if you're interested in astrology, 
Bhamana Dev, you should worship him every day, but particularly uh, those who are interested in astrology, you should, if you worship Bhamana Dev on uh, Thursdays, then uh, if anybody has any Guru Dosha, the Guru Dosha goes away. Okay, something like that. Okay. Because he is very dear to Brahaspati. Brahaspati is Guru. Hmm?